Blizzard recently revealing Season of Discovery Phase 2. I'm going to leave this link in the description of the video if you want to check this out for yourself. They did have a reveal video where the developers were talking about the changes. This will also be, of course, on this link if you wish to see that for yourself. And uh, the information below is really just uh, topics that were covered, although there is a little bit more information in the video than what's uh, covered here uh, that I'll talk about as I go through it. Uh, the Norbergon Raid Dungeon, this was already something that was known. It is going to be a 10-man raid. There's going to be six bosses. And uh, the important note here that I took away from this is as far as the lockouts, you know, there was some debate about what the raid lockouts were going to look like and when the raid would go live. The raid is going to go live on February 8th when the Season of Discovery Phase 2 launches. There will be a reset on Tuesday the 13th. The second reset will occur on Tuesday, February 20th. And then after that, it's going to be a three-day lockout, exactly like Black Fathom Deeps is now. So this is kind of where they landed. Um, they're saying it's a compromise from uh, people that wanted to rush straight into the raid as quickly as possible versus people that wanted to slow down and actually discover in the season of discovery. Now you can still slow down, play at your own pace, and you're not going to miss too many raid lockouts if that's the way you choose to play the game. We got some boss updates here. This is for Nomergon. We can see here uh, Grubus, new radiation vents. So there's going to be some new mechanics on the bosses. Again, this is likely as expected based on what we saw from Black Fathom Deeps. Uh, the crowd pummeler has moved to a new part of the dungeon where your encounter will occur on a raised platform. We got a nice little screenshot of that here. So it's actually going to be in a different spot within the raid now, no longer a dungeon. And Mechineer Thermoplug uh, has new mechanical suits as part of his arsenal. So again, just new mechanics on the bosses. So it's not going to be totally new, but it should be freshened up a little bit to keep things exciting for those of you who have run uh, classic Nomergon so many times in the past. And then, of course, the part that everybody is interested in, the loot. So we can see here they've got some loot, um, a few nods to older items that were previous staples in the dungeon. And you can see here, uh, also an important note, items such as the automatic crowd pummeler will allow players to pick up just one of these items and reuse it over and over as a quality of life improvement. So if you find the automatic crowd pummeler, you're not going to have to find another one. You'll be able to use it, uh, use the cooldown on it, and you know it's going to stay in your inventory. So that's going to be nice. And then uh, you can see here some of the examples that they provided. Again, uh, these are works in progress. Stats may not be final, so these could change around a little bit. But uh, some pretty powerful looking stuff compared to what we see at level 25. Again, as you would expect, items have been scaled up, up to be more uh, level appropriate for the level 40. And uh, and looking at this automatic crowd pummeler, this thing like really gets you excited to play, you know, like Druid, Paladin, and Shaman, the classes that can use it. Uh, tons of strength, agility, and then... Uh, Attack power in cat and bear form. And then, of course, the DPS cooldown. Uh, increase your attack speed by 50%, 30 seconds. So pretty uh, exciting item there as far as items go. And then you can see the other things here as well. Again, you know, just really, really good loot. A little bit of a tank trinket here with a, with a on-use defense. Uh, this one is kind of... I don't know that you actually necessarily need a defensive trinket. You know, everybody wants to push damage on the damage meters. Uh, but are tanks ever really in danger of dying? Um, is the question. And most of the time, I would say no when it comes to Black Fathom Deeps. Um, you just don't really need defensive cooldowns. So unless Nomergon is going to be more difficult than Black Fathom Deeps, I feel like the uh, all of the defensive type of items, you know, aren't necessarily going to be uh, needed. But we do have that option there. And then they've also added in some fun items, as you can see here. Not really my cup of tea, but if you like toys, they're going to have some of that included in the raid as well. And then we can see here the uh, set loot. Um, when you look at the set bonuses, a lot of the same stuff that we're seeing currently from Black Fathom Deeps as far as uh, improve your chance to hit with uh, spells and melee. We see a chance to be able to increase your damage and healing for 10 seconds on the cloth piece. And then a chance to restore mana on the mail piece. So some pretty good stuff here. Leather, not here. Obviously, there is going to be a leather set. This is just a few examples that they threw out. I've already seen some people kind of complaining, you know, uh, there's not going to be this. There's not going to be that. Listen, it's in there. They're not crazy. These are just a few examples to try to get people excited and to make you wonder. It's the season of discovery. We got to get out and discover this stuff for ourselves. Another important note here is that there's actually going to be tokens. There's going to be set tokens. So I know there's a lot of people that are saying yes, because they're so unlucky. You know, six, eight, 10, 12 raid resets. You don't have the opportunity to be able to even roll on an item just because it never drops. Maybe you'll be able to get one of these tokens and be able to turn it in so that you can complete the set. So I think that's gonna be a welcome change uh, for a lot of people going forward. Dungeon updates. 
Uh, Seasons of Discovery Phase 2 will also have new skill books added as part of the five player dungeon drops from various creatures. Quality of life improvements will not take a rune slot. That's good news. Help address things such as short aura durations for Paladin Blessings, Totem Control for Shaman, or even as a part of manipulating combo points for Rogue and the target that these are on and more. Here's just a few examples. So again, there's going to be more. Uh, these are actually pretty exciting to me personally. Uh, Paladin was my first level 25 in uh, phase one. And one of the reasons that made me not want to play Paladin was the really, really short buff duration. You know, having to throw out buffs every five minutes was a bit silly. Um, you know, even considering that it's classic WoW. So you'll be able to find this in five man dungeons. And then hopefully that's going to get that duration up to 30 minutes, uh, an hour. You know, as long as it's something more than five minutes, it's going to be good. And it's kind of one of those things that, you know, you learn this book and then you just forget about it. I don't think you have to do anything else with it. Shaman are going to get uh, Totemic Projection. That's going to be good for the Shaman players out there. Uh, rogues, likely to me, this just means that the combo points are on the Rogue rather than on the target, which is not only a quality of life, but actually just a buff for Rogues. And you could argue that this is not just quality of life. This is a buff for Shaman as well. So going to be some pretty interesting things here. I think you could reasonably assume that Druids probably also are going to get combo points uh, on the player rather than on the target. And... Uh, should be some really, really good stuff here. Quality of life improvements are definitely something that I was personally looking for out of Season of Discovery. You know, I would like to have the game be closer to Classic WoW, but, you know, with a few modern improvements to kind of make the game a bit more up-to-date, seeing as how old Classic WoW actually is. So lots of good stuff there. Rune ability updates. Again, one of the things that, you know, people are really looking forward to here. Again, they just show a few examples here. Starting off with the Druid runes. Uh, we are going to have Eclipse for the people that like to play the uh, Moonkin spec. Uh, never really been a big fan of that myself. It's definitely going to be a buff. Whether or not you like the play style will be up to the individual. And uh, King of the Jungle fundamentally changes Tiger's Fury by increasing physical damage. You deal by 15% as well as instantly granting you 60 energy. And it's going to go to a 30 second cooldown. So big buff for Tiger's Fury, which is actually totally worthless right now. Uh, I don't even have it on my bar on my Feral Druid. And then you can see here, uh, Eclipse is going to be a belt rune, and King of the Jungle is actually going to be a boots rune. So kind of what I take from this, um, just the way that they've laid out Season of Discovery, there were four runes available on the slots that were introduced in Phase 1. So I'm kind of under the assumption that there will be uh, four runes for the belt, four runes for the boots. So, you know, classes are going to have options. Again, this isn't everything. I've heard people, oh, there's only two runes of class. No, these are just samples so we'll relax and take that with a grain of salt here and i was kind of loosely under the impression that there were going to be 12 new runes so there could be an additional say shoulder slot with new runes maybe maybe not i don't have anything official on that uh, but we do have that to look forward to got some paladin runes here she the blight will cause uh, damage dealt with your melee weapon to increase spell power that should be pretty fun and interesting and also cause your critical heals to apply an additional heal over time on the target. So important to note here, you know, it does kind of seem like a healing rune, but you might also actually want to use this as a retribution or even as a tank spec. You know, the spell power is going to be pretty useful for the things that paladins are going to be doing. We'll just have to see what other runes are going to compete with it. Uh, Guarded by the Light uh, will cause your melee weapon to restore mana over time. However, the amount healed by Flash of Light, Holy Light, and Holy Chakra will be reduced by half. So... Uh, this, to me, is more going to be like Retribution and uh, Protection Paladins. They're going to be interested in this. Uh, one of the big complaints that I personally had about Paladin, also, in addition to the short buff durations, I really hated the idea of having to stop and drink as a Protection Paladin and a Ret Paladin. And it looks like this will be able to alleviate that. Again, we'll have to see what it competes with in this Boots slot, but definitely going to be a, an interesting rune that we'll be able to consider moving into Phase 2. Hunter runes, uh, melee specialist doesn't in uh, interest me in the slightest, but I do know there's a pocket of uh, a few folks out there that are really interested in melee hunters, so they're going to be getting some rune support for that. And diversity, hey, it's great for the game, just not my personal cup of tea. And a trap launcher, you know, this looks to be really good, allows you to place traps at any location within 40 yards, and allows you to place traps while in combat, so that's going to be a, a, just a big buff to hunter that it's going to be running this rune. And your fire and frost-based traps have separate shared cooldowns, so it's going to allow you to drop that freezing trap while in combat. You know, if you end up pulling an extra enemy that you didn't want to, so on and so forth. So it's pretty good stuff here for hunters as well. Uh, Warrior Runes Rallying Cry is a defensive ability which can be activated to increase the health of all party and raid members within 40 yards. So, 
you know, certainly if Ashenvale PvP is still a thing, I don't think it will be. I think people are tired of it. But, uh, you know, Rallying Cry could potentially be good in something like that. Uh, it could be good uh, PvP in general if you're into running like Warsong Gulch and Arathi Basin. Uh, when it comes to PvE, again, defensive cooldowns just don't really feel like they're needed. So I kind of would assume that there's something better that you're or something different that you're going to want to have on your boots, but we'll see how that goes. Blood Surge gives some of your abilities a chance to make your next slam instant and cost no rage. We can see Heroic Strike, Bloodthirst, and Whirlwind. 30% chance to make your next slam instant within 15 seconds and cost no rage. So Warrior's going to be getting a little bit more damage out of this. Warrior's already the king of DPS. Uh, really expected to take off and just be uh, totally unquestioned king of DPS in phase two. Um, I get that they have to give, you know, warrior something new, something with runes and new abilities and things like that. Uh, it does kind of make me just a little bit sad on the inside that warriors are getting more damage though, but maybe some of the other specs will be able to catch up to warrior. Uh, rogue runes, shuriken toss to throw a shuriken at the enemy, dealing damage to your target and up to four additional nearby targets. As we can see here, it's going to be 25% of your attack power and uh, four additional nearby targets. And it's also going to award a combo point. So this is going to be good for both DPS rogue as well as tank rogue. Tank rogues, you know, being able to hit multiple targets to be able to pull a group and kind of get that snap aggro is going to be really good for tank rogue. Honestly, probably a little bit better for... Uh, the tank rogues than it is for DPS rogues, but again, as a DPS rogue, you're going to be looking to do a little bit of AOE with this. So definitely going to be a welcome addition to the rogue toolkit here. And we also have Master of Subtlety. Uh, attacks made while stealth and for six seconds afterwards uh, cause an additional 10% damage. So to me, that's really just more of a PvP rune, but it is going to be an option. Maybe Subtlety becomes a really good spec and, uh, you know, you would want to use this. Uh, off the top of my head, I feel like it's probably just more PvP related though. Uh, priest runes, cast Mind Spike to blast your target with Shadow Frost damage and apply a debuff which increases critical strike chance of your next Mind Blast and the debuff can stack up to three times. So a little bit of uh, Shadow Priest support. Always happy to see that. I've always enjoyed Shadow Priest personally. And a favorite from later expansions, we're seeing Pain Suppression here. So again, defensive cooldown in PvE, I don't really think it's needed. Again, I could be wrong depending on how hard Nomergon is actually going to be, but it could be something good to use in PvP. Um, we'll just have to see how that plays out. Warlock runes with invocation. Uh, when you refresh some of your damage over time effects, when they have less than six seconds, instant damage will be dealt to your target equal to one tick of that spell's periodic damage. You no longer have to worry about refreshing your damage over time at the perfect moment. Nice quality of life change for warlocks, and it's also going to be actually a little bit of buff to the damage that warlocks are able to do. Welcome change there. And Dance of the Wicked will trigger, trigger a buff which increases you and your pet's dodge chance anytime either of you deal a critical strike to an enemy. You also gain 2% of your maximum mana when this occurs. So to me, this is really just support for tank warlocks. And uh, likely expected, I would assume that all of the uh, new specs that have been introduced with Season of Discovery will receive more rune support. So uh, that's going to be tank rogue, tank warlock. Uh, healing mage, uh, really expecting to see more runes that are going to support and kind of fill out those specs. So a welcome change here. I've seen some conversation about this, about how it's worthless, but I think people may be forgetting that Warlocks can actually tank now. And the fact that it uh, is going to restore mana as well is going to be just good for Warlock class as a whole. Um, if you feel like you really need the mana as a, a DPS Warlock versus, you know, having to tap for it, be an option there as well. Mage Runes, Missile Barrage gives your Arcane Blast, Fireball, and Frostbolt spells a chance to reduce the channel duration of your next Arcane Missiles by half, makes it free, and the Missiles fire every half second. So basically, Arcane Missiles is just going to deal its damage um, twice as fast, which is going to be good for any mage that's trying to deal damage with Arcane Missiles, and it's free. Free is always the best cost to have on your abilities, um, so going to be going to be an interesting rune there. Uh, Chronostatic Preservation is a great new spell that allows you to store some of your Arcane Fire and Frost Energy for later use. You can only hold this energy for a short time, but you can use this energy to heal a friendly target. So again, we're seeing support for a new spec in Healing Mage here. You can see the details here. Actually, it looks like it has the potential to be a pretty beefy heal, and it lasts for 15 seconds, so that'll be nice for the Healing Mages out there. Uh, it might even be something that just a Questing Mage would want to use, depending on the content that you're trying to run, if you need that extra healing. 
Shaman Rune's Maelstrom Weapon causes damage dealt with melee attacks to have a chance to reduce the cast time of Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning, Healing Wave, Lesser Healing Wave, Chain Heal, or Lava Burst by 20%, stacking up to five times. So potentially it's just going to be a uh, instant cast on those particular spells. Again, should just be a welcome quality of life change uh, and buff as well. Spirit of the Alpha is almost the opposite of Blessing of Salvation. Cast a 30-minute buff on a friendly target to increase threat generated by that target. So again, I would assume that, you know, likely the Shaman would want to put this on themselves if they are a tanking Shaman. Outside of that, I don't think a DPS Shaman would want to take this and put it on, you know, the Paladin tank or anything like that. Probably not going to be needed, but could be some interesting things um, with runes from other classes. You know, maybe if Shaman does have room to be able to take this, a particular rune on the slot that it goes on and then it frees up paladin to take a different rune on their threat generating rune slot and the same with any other tank so it's going to be something that uh, you know different raid teams or different uh, party groups might want to work out to see what's going to be the best for the group overall while some shaman choose to battle with one weapon in each hand others prefer to hand out devastating <laughs> devastating blows let's hand out some devastating blows with a two-handed weapon Dealing damage with a two-handed weapon is your play style. You want to pick up two-handed mastery. Each time you strike an enemy with a two-handed weapon, you gain 30% attack speed with this weapon for 10 seconds. So basically, two-handed shaman is going to be getting an auto attack buff. <laughs> Say it like that, it doesn't sound that exciting, but it's going to be good for the people that want to use a two-handed weapon as an enhancement shaman. You can see the details on the runes here. Uh, this is actually going to go on a chest, this two-handed mastery. So it's actually going to be a new rune on an existing uh, location. So again, it kind of reveals a little bit more about, uh, you know, what's going to be going on with the rune. So there could be some new runes on some uh, currently items that can be ruined. And then we're seeing uh, boots and belt added as well. So important note there as we think about the possibilities. PvP update, Beware the Blood Moon, Phase 2, introducing a new PvP event, the Blood Moon. It's going to be in Stranglethorn Vale, and uh, it's going to create a red fog. You can kind of see that we have a little bit of a picture here. Building on what we learned from Ashenvale PvP. Listen, Ashenvale is not PvP. It's a PvE race where the side that has the most players wins. I think we can all agree on that. It's not, Ashenvale is not PvP in any way. Now, we created this event to occur at a predictable timetable so that players can plan for uh, when they want to take part. So they've set it at three hours. It's going to last for 30 minutes in Stranglethorn Vale. Uh, killing players allows you to earn currency, which can be traded for rewards. And while you can still group with your allies, uh, the Blood Moon is a harsh mistress and will punish those in raid groups. So a five-man party, it sounds like, will not be affected. But if you're in a raid group, you're not going to be earning uh, as much currency or maybe any currency at all. No full details on what that punishment is going to be for a raid group. But definitely, you're not going to want to go over five players if you're wanting just actual rewards. And uh, you can actually opt out of it as well, which will be nice. Um, if you're on a PvP server, obviously, you're not opting out of PvP still be uh, in a fight at any time. But if you're on a PvE server, you will be able to opt out of this if you just wanted to do some quests in uh, Stranglethorn Vale. And uh, unlike Ashen Vale, there will not be any objectives. Uh, you will also need to keep a sharp eye out for the Chosen of the Blood Loa, who is uh, more than a force to be reckoned with and will kill all in their path. So uh, one of the thoughts that I had about this, uh, it's not clear, is this gonna be like an NPC, a mob that just roams around just destroying players or Will players be randomly chosen and this is actually just a buff? Uh, because when I think about like the PvP in Stranglethorn Vale, it sounds like it's going to be dominated by rogues. You pop out of stealth, you kill somebody, you get your currency, and then you go back in stealth and start looking for your next target. But, you know, if you have a chance during that 30 minutes to be hit with a buff and given the ability to uh, potentially kill a lot of players and get a lot of currency, that could be something that would be... Uh, you know, it might be relatively entertaining. So I'll be interested to see exactly what that's going to look like and uh, and what's going to happen with that. And then the rewards, what everybody's interested in. And the rewards actually look really good here. Again, two examples. This isn't everything, but this looks like a really, really strong ring for casters. And then it uh, looks like a, a pretty powerful one-handed mace here. 10 strength, 6 agility, 31.1 damage per second. And you can see that these are epics. So it's kind of one of those things where players that min-max are likely going to be forced to compete in PvP. 
um, simply because I would imagine that these items are going to be really good. And potentially you're going to be able to get these epic items uh, more quickly than you can actually get the raid drops. So a, a lot of incentive from the uh, loot here to com compete in this PvP, be able to get the currency. So I don't know how you feel about that. I know a lot of people that don't like PvP hate being forced to compete in it. But uh, it looks like that could be the situation going into phase two here. Also going to have a couple of new mounts that are going to be tied to the PvP event. That's going to be great. Again, uh, mounts at uh, level 40 going to be a part of phase two. Definitely looking forward to that. And uh, PvP updates, um, they're making some changes with pre-made groups, uh, but they say that they want to be careful about impacting queues, how long we're going to be waiting in line to get into the PvP. Uh, players in groups of five or less will have a higher chance to match against groups of five or less. And if you're in a group of six or more, you have a higher chance of matching with a group of six or more. Uh, basically trying to get those 10-man pre-maids to fight other 10-man pre-maids and not just be stomping uh, a public group. Uh, to account for potential to create longer queues with this updated matching system, the system will ignore these rules after a period of time should we start seeing these queues impacted. So for what I've seen, a season discovery is popular. The queue times in PvP are short, so this should help quite a bit. Uh, for people that are just tired of being stomped by pre-maids if you're not going in with a pre-maid yourself. So certainly a welcome change there. Uh, Ashenvale also being changed to a three-hour timer. Again, I would expect Ashenvale to just be totally deserted once Phase 2 launches. If you're interested in Warsaw and Gold Trap, it's probably the best idea would be to uh, hit Revered, if at all possible, prior to Phase 2 launching. I really don't think people are going to want to go back and compete in Ashenvale. Uh, it could be situations where you just get no rep in Ashenvale because there's not enough people to actually be able to kill a boss. We also see some profession updates here. Uh, there's going to be new patterns expanding on what they were doing in phase one and approximately 20 new recipes across all non-gathering professions. So there's going to be a decent amount of new stuff here. And then we can see again, just some examples. We're going to have a male hat or hood or headpiece, whatever you might want to call it. And you can see the stats here. Looks like it's going to be a pretty powerful item. And important to note here, uh, bind on pickup. So you're actually going to have to have leather working if you wanted to be able to make this. And then we also see a uh, plate helm that's going to come from blacksmithing. Again, you know, stats are pretty impressive and, you know, look like actually pretty interesting items. Another interesting thing to point out here, some of these uh, mats that are used to create this don't look familiar. Um, hyperconductive arcano filament. So I have a feeling that some of the crafting materials may actually drop from the raid itself. You might actually have to run the raid to be able to craft these, which would not be totally surprising. And we also have the tailor item here. Again, it's a headpiece, uh, 10 and 11 stamp intellect, and then you can see the different effects that it has here. So really, really strong stuff. Alchemists and Enchanters will find a couple of new recipes as well, which can bring more utility and throughput into their gameplay, rather than simply creating things that they can use and sell for a little extra gold. And then we see a couple of examples here. We have an Enchanted Sigil of Innovation. Uh, empowers you to deal 20 increased damage and healing with spells and increase attack power by 20 for 30 minutes. This can only be applied outside of combat, so it's a 30-minute buff that you can get uh, as an Enchanter which will be nice for, uh, for enchanting. It's going to be just be a way to be able to increase your character power with your profession uh, outside of the permanent buffs that you could give yourself by enchanting. And then we also see alchemy here. We have the mildly irradiated rejuvenation potion, uh, restores mana and health, also increases attack power by 40 and damage done by all spells by 35 for 15 seconds. So it's kind of going to give you a, a potion that's going to uh, be almost like a DPS cooldown. Uh, it doesn't, uh, damage done by all spells. So it doesn't seem like this is going to affect healing. Maybe there's a different potion for healing, or maybe it's just not worded correctly here, but I would assume that if you're a healer and you're an alchemist, you're going to be able to have some kind of like cooldown item from alchemy as well. Uh, no more gold dragon killer point runs. We're experimenting with a new policy, which will no longer allow GDKP runs in season of discovery. It's something that they're just looking to kill off. They say it's because they think it kills the uh, social atmosphere, uh, social structure, as they call it, in the uh, season of discovery. So basically, they're trying to test out a way to be able to eliminate uh, gold DKP runs. We'll see how that goes. And also a little bit controversial. I've been seeing some of the reaction of this. People that love GDKP hate this change. And uh, people that hate GDKP 
love this change. So we'll see how it goes. Um, off the top of my head, I have no idea how they're going to be able to prevent this. It feels like there's going to be some type of workaround for players that they'll be able to figure out rather quickly of how they can continue this practice. So uh, we'll have to see what the details are on that. But something they're certainly trying to do is to eliminate the GDKP. And then also, uh, players looking to catch up with their friends above level 25 will be implementing a 50% experience buff from level 1 to 25, so a catch-up mechanic. Also see an increase uh, in experience gained within Black Fathom Deep's raid dungeon when it's cleared. So I believe they said in the video that at level 26 is when this is going to kick in, but basically it's an incentive to come back and run back Fathom Deep's when you're, you know, say level 30. Um... You might actually want to clear this on every lockout simply because they're saying it's going to give a big boost of experience. And honestly, you know, when you're in the late 20s and early 30s, the items from Black Fathom Deeps may actually still be some of the best gear that you have available to you. So not necessarily going to be totally done with Black Fathom uh, just because phase two begins. Uh, the raid dungeon will continue with the current lockout timer. So again, that's going to be every three days and you'll no longer be able to get the world buff beyond level 39. So potentially though, while leveling, you're still going to be able to go into the city where the uh, buff drops and uh, be able to get the buff. I know a lot of people will be looking for that 20% run speed buff and uh, the damage and whatnot as they're leveling to try to get to 40. So interesting there that they're going to allow that to continue. And they give people an incentive to actually run Black Fathom Deeps because I think kind of the thinking was, well, you know, you can boon um, the buff and then you can save it and you'll have it for the first two hours as you're on your way to level 40. But now there's actually going to still be people running Black Fathom Deeps and you'll be able to refresh that buff. So I think a lot of people will look forward to that. Way late supplies will also see an adjustment. We'll share more later, but there'll be a significant increase in experience gained from them on turn in. Again, I kind of had this on my list of things to do before uh, phase two launches was be to get fully honored uh, with the waylaid supplies um, simply because it, they're kind of a pain. If you could carry more than one waylaid supplies at a time, it wouldn't be that bad. But the fact that you're limited to only one in your inventory at a time makes it really tedious to have to go and turn that in and then come back and get more. So uh, I think it's certainly something that I will be happy to see. And then also, you know, I would assume that uh, those reputations are going to have new rewards as well. So you're definitely going to want to keep up with that reputation. Could be runes available, could be gear, patterns, you know, likely some of the same stuff that we've already seen. So uh, definitely going to be looking forward to that. And then we also see here uh, phase two goes live February 8th at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So you can Figure that out for yourself for your own time zone, but we actually have the time of when Phase 2 is going to go live. I'm Uncorrupt, super excited about Phase 2 of the Season of Discovery, and I look forward to seeing you out there.